Hello, I'm Linda, and this is No Frills ASMR. I was in the storage area, and I saw this box that says Texas Imperial Boots, and I thought, what's in that box? So I opened it, and I found treasure. Let me set the top down. Hold on. So I thought we could take a look and just pull all this stuff out and see what we find. But it appears to be Matchbox cars in their original packaging. And I'm pretty sure these all came from my father-in-law's house. Um, he would sometimes collect things in packaging. So I just thought we could take a little look through and see what we see. So first off, there are these catalogs um, that maybe in a separate video we can just go through and look at the catalogs. This one says Dinky Toys, which was another toy car maker. I think they were English Maybe these are all out of England, but um, there was like Dinky, what was the one we saw in a different video I did? I think it was like Cor Corgi, <laughs> that's a dog, <laughs> it was something like that, and Matchbox, anyway, Matchbox 1972, 1980, wait, we can put these in order by year, I think, 73, 74, it's a little bit um, folded. 74, 78 as a police. 75, that looks so like um, Evil Knievel. <laughs> His helmet looks kind of like that. Ooh, another 75. 77. And then these two are the same. Okay, so let's see. We have the oldest one. We have a 73, 74, 75. Oh, no, the oldest is 72. 77, 78, and 80. So when is this one from? It says Lesney Products Corp. West Germany, 1976, so that'll go right here, 76. So maybe if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and maybe we can kind of just look through these a little bit and look inside. I don't know if that's very interesting or not. And then there's the Dinky Toys catalog. So, all right, let's see what we have. Um, so this says Y12 Matchbox 1909 Thomas Flyabout. Now I think these were called, yeah, Models of Yesteryear, made in England. Um, my mother-in-law was from England. She came over when she married her, <laughs> you know, American soldier husband. But, um, so these could be that he bought them in England. I don't know. It says 1909 Thomas Flyabout. Thomas K. 670 was often referred to as the world's most perfect car. This particular model has been superbly restored by Harris Automobile Collection, Reno, Nevada, in the USA. So it still has the um, plastic little window. And I think they've been kept in the box because they're not dusty or faded or anything. So that's kind of cool. All right, we'll just set that one there. What else? I don't know whether, like, these ones are older, or these ones, ooh, this one's broken. Um, but I would guess the yellow, it looks like 
folder font. Matchbox models of yesteryear 1912 Rolls Royce. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> and somehow it got a little bit broken. Uh, the six cylinder 7046 CC engine was so quiet, it was likened to a silent sewing machine. And so smooth, a penny could be balanced on the radiator. It could travel at 60 miles per hour and use a gallon of petrol every 20 miles. 20 miles a gallon. All right. What have we here? The Maxwell, 1911 Maxwell Roadster. So... I know these haven't been uh, messed with, but I kind of want to open one. <laughs> it says Ace Toys 99 cents. I can hear something clinking around in that one. This model, G.A. Maxwell, is one of the antique automobiles in the collection of Henry Austin Clark Jr. of Long Island, New York. It sold for $1,400 in 1911 and was described by the manufacturer, the Maxwell Briscoe Motor Company, as the classiest, snappiest, most comfortable, comfortable two-passenger roadster built. Cool. I'm going to need a, um, a uh, magnifying glass for some. What is that one? Anybody recognize that car? I don't. <laughs> 1911. Oh, it's a Model T Ford. Well, I should have recognized <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. 1911 Model T Ford. Yeah, that one. Plastic's all good on it. From 1909 until 1927, 15 million Model T Fords were built with no basic engineering changes. From 1909 to 27, no basic engineering changes. That's interesting. These cars were cheap, simple, rugged, agile, durable, and somewhat ugly. They could go anywhere except in society. That's funny. This miniature <coughs> me, represents the colorful early I have to clear my throat a lot <coughs> this miniature represents the colorful early brass radiator model oh no I have a frog in my throat you guys hold on put my face in a pillow I don't have my uh, water up here right now, so. <laughs> but you have my pillow behind me. Okay, I think I'm good. Ooh, this one's tiny. Look at that. This must be an old, old one. It says 1911 Maxwell Roadster. Well, isn't that what this one is? Y14. And this one says made in England. No, they both say made in England. Huh. Interesting. Oh, like I can read that. I don't even know which way. So <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't even tell which direction it should go in. Okay. Well. Should we open it? I think it's been opened. Yes, it has. What does that say? Made and packaged lead-free. That's good to hear. Everybody 
always I say in everything old has lead. <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, looky there, guys. It's a roadster. Feels like it's all metal. The wheels are rubber. Models of yesteryear made in England. <laughs> Pretty cool. I like the color, that's for sure. For sure. Put it back in its little garage. Bye bye. Okay. What do we have here? 1907. Is that a. I don't know how to say it. Pugo, Pugo, maybe. I'm not familiar. First built in 1906, the Pugo, Pugo, I don't know, had a 12, 16 horsepower, four cylinder engine, engine cast in pairs, maximum speed of 34 miles per hour. The power was transmitted by chain to the driving wheels. Notable features of this you go where the traffle shock absorbers <laughs> using rubber for the first time which was both efficient and reliable pretty cool that's a cool looking car 1934 Riley MPH. Can you see that? How cool it is? I don't know if you can tell. I almost want to take it out of the box. Mm. The extremely good looking car, agree, with its flared mud wings and convex tail in which it carried little more than a spare wheel, is a particular favorite amongst Riley enthusiasts. The car with its six-cylinder 1500cc engine, which Riley introduced in 1933, could reach a genuine 85 miles per hour plus and handled beautifully into the bargain. Whoa, that looks pretty cool. This is a 1911 Renault two-seater. Pretty cool looking. This model, <laughs> I have to use this, has a twin cylinder side valve engine rated at 8 horsepower. Today, petrol consumption on this 57 year old car averaged 37 miles per gallon. Maximum speed is 40 miles per hour. And the car has averaged 24.7 miles per hour over a 200 mile journey across. Yeah, these are very British, so I'm going to guess he got these all in. What's the... Ooh, hey, hey, my brother had this one. <laughs> the Londoner. This is a double-decker bus. I really want to take it out. I think I might. <laughs> if it seems doable without messing up the box. I'm not super... you haven't noticed. Ooh, look, it's minty, minty condition. The one we had was beat all the heck. <laughs> and we'd like stuffed little people in there and stuff. There's the driver's seat. Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, that's in really nice shape. <laughs> Wing in London, Carnaby Street. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Bravo. Nineteen thirty-eight, Lagonda Drophead Coupe.
1938 Lagonda Drophead Coupe. This car was powered by the famous four and a half liter engine of Henry Meadows Limited. The engine had a claimed output of 140 bhp, bhp, giving the car a top speed of nearly 100 miles per hour. A Lagonda using the same power unit was outright winner of the classic Le Mans 24-hour race in 1944 Stutz. Look, it says. What does it say? Hold on. Bargain Town, USA. The dollar fifty-eight. Bargain Town. This attractive model is based on the 1914 Stutz Type 4E Roadster. It had a four-cylinder side valve engine of 36.1 horsepower and the rear wheels were driven by a shaft. The three-speed gearbox was mounted in the rear axie. axie. The Stutz was to become a symbol of style and performance in the USA. All right, well. Ooh, here we have a Mercedes SS Coupe. The Mercedes SS models of the late 20s were some of the most exciting cars of the period, with a powerful supercharged 7 liter engine, a 4 speed gearbox, and twin carburetors. This coupe version was capable of 100 miles per hour. Ooh, look at this one. A Stutz Bearcat. I love the like. It's got dark green and then like lime green and red on the inside. This one was more expensive. Toys R Us. $2.96. says this two-seater 155 horsepower Bearcat had a factory guarantee of 100 miles per hour. Price when new was $4,995. The engine reached its ultimate in design in 1931 with the introduction of the double, double overhead camshaft. Cool looking, I'll tell you that. The Packard Victoria, also from Toys R Us. So I'm assuming these are newer based on the uh, price and the Toys R Us tag. The Packard <coughs> Victoria. Boy, that's hard to read. See how it's dark with dark print? Why do, why do companies do that? In the 30s, this car was one of the most expensive automobiles in America. Its classic body, custom built by Raymond Dietrich, was artfully blended onto a powerful straight eight side valve engine, making it capable of speeds of over 80 miles per hour. Whoa. What's this one? 1914. Prince Henry Vauxhall, Vauxhall, is that how you say V-A-U-X. I should learn French. This was probably the world's first true sports car, and it was renowned for its extremely smooth running. For its extremely smooth running. That's a period. The model is of a V2 four-seater, which had a four liter side valve engine, making it capable of speeds up to 75 miles per hour. Toys are, no, bargains. What is that? I keep forgetting the name of it. What is it? It's a uh, bargain town, $1.58. All right. What's this one? 1906 
Rolls Royce Silver Ghost. It's a ghost. It's a ghost, ghost. Powered by a six cylinder engine, giving a capacity of 7,036 cc and incorporating a four speed gearbox. It was capable of a speed of nearly 50 miles per hour. The name sounds cooler than the uh, miles per hour. Matchbox. Oh. <coughs> hmm. 1914 Prince Henry. We just had one of those. Yeah. So this is the same car. Different colors and years of manufacture, I guess. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that, Royal Air Force. I know something. 1918 Crossley RAF Tender. The Crossley, <coughs> Crossley military vehicle used by the Royal Air Force as tenders. Okay. should crack the window so I can hear it. 1930 Packard Victoria. In the 30s, this car was one of the most expensive automobiles in America. Rolls Royce Silver Ghost. Yeah, we already looked at that one, didn't we? A dollar forty nine. Uh oh, this one, the roof has come off or something. There's pieces here. 1928 Mercedes-Benz 36220. The 1928 7.1 liter, blah, 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 enjoyed considerable success in com competitions handled by leading drivers of the day. Kind of looks like the car, the, um, in Downton Abbey. <laughs> Nineteen oh nine Opal Coupe. That's cool looking. <coughs> Introduced as the Opal Doctor's Car, this two seater coupe was originally intended as reliable transport for country physicians, but soon found favor with other early motorists as well. <laughs> Just like reliable. Nineteen thirty Packard Victoria. I think we had we definitely had one of these. Somewhere over here we did. There it is. Okay, so we have two of those. Nineteen thirty eight Hispano Souza. Oh my gosh, look how cool that one is. Oh, it's pretty oh I can't show you it. Thunder. I wanna take it out of the packaging. pretty pretty cool this okay let's see what it says the roadster no the radiator cap was graced by a silver plated flying stork and the car was fast luxurious and expensive oh yeah nineteen thirty eight Legando Drophead Coupe. Okay. 
a Lagonda using the same power unit was outright winner of the classic Le Mans 24-hour race in 1935. We've seen a few that were that. Yeah. 1930 Model J Dusenberg. The Duesenberg was one of the most powerful and expensive motor cars of the early 1930s. The car was regarded as the ultimate status symbol and was constructed from the finest materials available at the time. We've seen this guy, haven't we? 1912 Simplex. In New York, Simplex cars were among the finest made in America in their day. In New York. We had this one, didn't we? The 1907, because I don't know how to say Peugeot. Peugeot. Nineteen eleven Daimler. This was the smallest of the famous sleeve valve engined Daimlers and was made only in nineteen eleven. Known as the Type A twelve with an engine of one I can't one seven liters, this car had the unusual feature of Rudge Whitworth wire wheels as standard equipment. Some the seat is loose. You have to click it on, I think. Nineteen twelve Packard Landolette. Boy, it's getting dark in here. Because <laughs> of the rain. It's making it hard to see. Nineteen ten Benz Limousine. Ooh. For a four cylinder car, this was an advanced machine in its day and could <laughs> sorry, my <laughs> there's so much going on around me. There's a thunderstorm and then my kitty cat's playing in a bag. <laughs> This model of yesteryear has been reproduced from the actual machine. Whoa, what does that mean? <laughs> All right, we had one of these, 1938. Yep, there it is. So now we have two of those. Put those right here. Oops, sorry, that was loud. 1909 Thomas Flyabout. Thomas K. 670 was often referred to as the world's most perfect car. Wow. It seems like a lot. Let's say. 1913 Cadillac. And 1906 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost. We had one of these before somewhere. Let's find the 1912 Simplex. We had one of these already, I think. 1909 Opal Coupe. We had one of these. So some of these are definitely repeats. What is this one? 1909 Thomas Flyabout. I thought we See 
flying back here. That's new. Hold on. 1909 Thomas Flyabout. Oh, these are both 1909. It's weird. This one's broken. I don't know why. It, did be, it looks like someone poked it almost. Hmm. But here's the last one, and it's cool. <laughs> it's a king size articulated horse van. K18 matchbox. Oh, does it have the horses in there? I may have to open. is going in and out. How bad would it be for me to open it? Somebody tell me if it's worth something or if I can open it up. <laughs> Look at the truck. Mm, the cab moves back and forth. The doors open and close. What does it have? Suspension or something? <laughs> is. 